<clears throat> and let's try a new tool. W git. Um, so this is very similar to curl and that you can hit endpoints and receive data back. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it also it only uses HTTP, HTTPS, and FTP protocols, not like a million other ones like curl does. Um, it does support cookies and it was also started in the 1990s. So what makes wget special? Well, it is command line only. Um, curl actually has a library associated with it, libcurl, so curl is written C. So if you had an application, you could use libcurl to do anything that curl does, and it's very easy and it's not a command line tool. Whereas wget is only a command line. And it only supports basic, basic authentication as well. It doesn't support like tokens or OAuth or anything like that. Um, and the awesome thing about it is that it's recursive. So this is extremely useful. So if we go back to the command line, let's do a little wget command. So we're going to hit the foundation uh, website. So before we do anything, let's check this out. All right, so this is the foundation website. It has a few links here, but it's pretty straightforward overall. So if we were to hit this. Almost. Oh, so close. <laughs> Keep right. here. There we go. All right. So uh, if I look in this directory, it created, it like pulled down the index.html file. And we can also see that we got a 200 OK, which is good. Um, so if I were to open this index.html file, hey, I basically just got the website without the CSS. So that's awesome. So, um, let's try that. And let's try uh, one more wget. Um, we're going to add a spider flag here. So this is going to like use the links in the page to find like where it should go next. Although this first time around, it will return a 200, and then it'll be like, hey, remote file exists, and, could not, and it could contain further links, but recursion, recursion is not turned on. So let's turn recursion on and see what happens. So that's just a dash R flag. All right, so it returns a bunch of stuff. And the, uh, so this is going to recursively use the links in the first page to like hit the other links and find links in those pages. So it's just a giant like tree of, you know, of links. So if we were to look at what was downloaded, all right, so we created this foundation folder and then we made core. All right, so it went, you know, three deep. The actual, um, the default is five, the depth that it will search. And it does a breadth first search, if anyone is curious. <laughs> um, yeah, so say that I did not want it to go by deep. Right, so we're going to use the dash L flag, so that's it basically stands for like limit how far you want it to like go. Um, I only want to go one deep. So yeah, well, I should have probably gotten rid of the. You need to delete. Yeah. You need to delete. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Try this one more time. All right. So if I look into the sky. All right. So there's nothing after that. There's nothing in there. Um, so awesome. That was pretty cool. It only went one deep. I didn't get a bunch of data that I didn't want. And if I got rid of the spider flag, we can also do some cool stuff. So this downloaded the index file and also um, the CSS file. It basically downloaded all the um, HTTP and CSS files and any other files it needed. So you created kind of a little like mini mirror of the site on your machine. Including the images, right? Uh, I don't think there were any images. I don't think so, yeah. But if there were images, it should grab them. I yeah. believe so. Assuming yeah. they're stored within the site tree. Yeah. yeah. But there's no pictures on this particular website. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, does anyone want to think about what we just did with wget? Make a guess of what we may have created besides a monster? <laughs> Okay, well, we basically, we created a web crawler, right? Mm -hmm. A very, extremely simple web crawler. So, <clears throat> if any of y'all want to work at like a search engine company or something, you know, they use web crawlers like crazy. And any, any sort of like data mining from the internet, 
uses a lot of power. Uh, so the, the file is transferred and zipped, right? Is a file zipped? No, so it just it just pulls like the individual like HTML files and whatever. It's not zipped in any way. It just creates the directories. There might be an option to tell it to zip it up, but yeah, in this case, it's just doing it raw. Because when you want to do a lot of, like, say, web web crawler, you don't want to get a lot of traffic mm -hmm. and limit bandwidth, right? Yeah. Yeah. Although even if you're zipping it, that's going to happen on the client side. So you're still going to be pulling the same amount of traffic over the network period. I mean, web crawling is not a bandwidth. I mean, it requires a lot of bandwidth, right? You're basically loading every page on the internet. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So if you want to learn about optimizing them and doing stuff like that, you should work for Google, say. Uh, um, or Microsoft, because expert. they want to know more about it. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah, so any questions about WGit? I'm not a huge WGit like, guru. I use curl more than WGit, but you can do some cool stuff. It's also very useful for just, there's a mirror command that is specifically for just straight up mirroring a website. Um, and there's some also other cool commands. And because of recursion, it can do sweet stuff. The main thing I use wget for is if like, I need to download a file. Like yeah. there's a zip file or something online, and I just do wget and then that address, right? I mean, if I'm loading like actual pages, I'll use curl, but it's a pain in the ass to use curl. You need to like, go grab a big file somewhere. It's because you have to like, type it into a file. wget just puts it into a file automatically. So. Next time you need to download something and you have the web address which you need to download, just do it on the command line and save yourself the trouble the browser. This is true. All right. So.